Hello, I'm Tyler, this is the Imaginary Axis, and this is my favorite food. Pizza. Pepperoni, to be exact. I know, how original. But don't blame me, the stuff tastes great. And believe it or not, but amongst my group of friends, I'm kind of known as that one guy who eats a lot. I know I'm not particularly big or anything, but looks can be deceiving. Like Kirby, for instance, Nintendo's 8-inch puffball from Dreamland, who's proven time and time again that you don't have to be big to be one of the most revered heroes in the universe and capable of swallowing entire buffets of monsters. Kirby is an alien powerhouse of mysterious origins whose name is known and feared across dimensions. He's adaptable, powerful, nigh indestructible, and don't let the smash power balance fool you, he is hard to put down. Entire cosmic entities have failed to defeat this single underaged warrior because of one reason. Eating. Kirby can eat practically anything and either convert the food perfectly into energy or assimilate its special abilities into his own. If survival of the fittest really is dependent upon a creature's ability to adapt, then Kirby is one of the fittest characters in all of fiction. But where does his adaptability end? Will Kirby's inhale and copy ability really allow him to overcome literally any obstacle in his way? Or will he eventually bite off more than he can chew? How much can Kirby eat? Hi. Well, the answer is actually pretty simple. You see, human stomachs can stretch, and they have an average resting volume of about 50 milliliters. If really pushed, they can expand to accommodate a whopping 4 liters, which is how competitive eaters train their stomachs to hold more food. So all we have to do is determine what Kirby's stomach is made of and realize it's an entirely separate dimension of reality. Well, there goes that method. Okay, so Kirby has his own personal pocket universe. Well, our first step is figuring out how big it is. Since we've seen items and living creatures floating around in it before and nothing out of the ordinary happened, we can probably assume that it has similar physical laws to our own universe. Besides, changing certain laws would just cause the universe to collapse in on itself. One of the most important things this implies is cosmic expansion. Kind of like that stomach we discussed earlier. Kind of. Our universe is constantly stretching in every direction. How do we know this? Well, because of a lot of things. Take redshifting, for example. You know how your eyes see different colors depending on the wavelength of light they're looking at? Long wavelengths are red, short wavelengths are blue. Well, if you look out at distant galaxies, they'll appear red to you. And this happens because the light is being stretched out. Because the galaxies are moving farther away from us. The point is that if Kirby's stomach is its own universe, then it has to be constantly growing too. And we can figure out how big it is today by going backwards. To the Big Bang. According to Big Bang cosmology, our own universe has been expanding outward for about 13.8 billion years now. All of space, all of time, all of everything. But if the universe is constantly getting bigger, there must have been a point when it was small. The singularity. The entire universe was compressed to a size trillions of times smaller than an atom. And theoretically, there must have been a time when Kirby's pocket universe was also that small. Before in a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a second, everything began expanding outward and hasn't stopped to this day. And by measuring how far our universe has expanded since our Big Bang, we can determine how far Kirby's universe has expanded since his. It might sound a little presumptuous, but I think it's only fair to assume that this Big Bang happened at Kirby's birth. Because if the expansion didn't start immediately and move at the same rate as ours, his universe would have basically become unstable and imploded. Which makes the hardest part of this whole thing determining Kirby's age. And I won't drag you through all the chaos I had to go through to figure that out, but my final estimation suggested that Kirby is probably around 10 years old. Though his species reaches maturity at around 200 years old. This would also explain why he's referred to as a young boy in some media and a baby in others. He's a child by our standards, but an infant by his own species. Regardless, 10 years after the Big Bang, the universe would have had a volume of roughly 131 quintillion, 522 quadrillion, 66 trillion, 948 billion cubic light years. That means Kirby has enough room in his belly to swallow our entire galaxy 3.4 million times. That is one heck of an appetite. 
No wonder Kirby's always hungry. If apples were the size of planets, he could eat 100 quadrillion of them and still have room for more. And as he gets older, Kirby will only get more and more room in his stomach. But I'm not talking like how a child gets taller and taller over time. Oh no. Kirby's stomach will expand roughly 3,500 light years in every direction, every day. And you know what? That also explains his inhale ability. You see, I doubt Kirby is actually inhaling at all, in the traditional sense. If the things he inhales are being sent to a pocket dimension, it's much more likely that he's just opening up a wormhole inside his body that bridges our universe with his own. The massive amount of gravity introduced to the environment naturally pulls enemies in and tosses them into another universe. Kirby might even have limited control over the area of effect, considering he sometimes has to really work to inhale enemies too big for his mouth. And no matter how you slice it, that's a power that really sucks. So stay away from Kirby and hang around in our universe for a while. Plenty of us are happy to have you here. Hey. <laughs>